So our next two presentations are going to be online, uh, online uh, from uh, oh thank you. Uh, from two authors from Cardiff University. So first, um, Daiva, I'm not pronouncing your surname, that is probably wrong, I'm going to say it. Uh, Daiva Marcy in Kevitute, kind of. <laughs> okay, she's going to be talking about a pl plausible layout generation using machine learning, evolutionary optimization, in param and parametric methods. Uh, the floor is yours when you want. Uh, hi, my name is Daiwa Marcinkevichute. Can you hear me well? Yes, yes. Okay. Yes, we can. Uh, so, uh, the topic is plausible layout generation using machine learning, evolutionary optimization, and parametric methods. And this was my master thesis at Cardiff University at the um, master program computational methods and architecture. So I recently graduated from this program and now I'm working at the Institute for Virtual Design and Construction in Switzerland. Before that, I was working as an architect and as a building project manager specialized in BIM and VDC. And uh, I worked on several BIM projects and got really interested in data management, programming, um, automation in, in construction industry, and especially parametric design. And thanks to my studies uh, uh, at Cardiff University and my current position, I'm now developing tools for construction industry full time since one and a half months. Um, this is uh, Professor Vasim Yabi. He was my thesis supervisor and he's the chair of computational methods and architecture program. And um, he studied in the University of Michigan. He did his PhD there and taught in multiple universities in the US and then moved to UK and started at Cardiff University. And he does research in parametric design, representations of space, building performance simulation, machine learning, and robotic fabrication and architecture. And he's one of the authors of um, a software called Topologic, which works in Dynamo and Grasshopper. And it's a library for um, querying topology of uh, buildings. So the research that I did, um, the aim was to perform test planning automatically by generating and checking building layouts. And uh, as you probably know, test planning is usually performed before a, an architectural competition is announced to make sure that the room program is plausible. And I thought it would be the perfect candidate for automatic layout generation as it can be performed with simplified rules as it's not going to actually be built. So um, the requirements that were um, checked this time were uh, room sizes and proportions, adjacencies, travel distances between the rooms and daylight. And to check adjacencies and travel distances between the rooms, uh, what is very important is that uh, um, the generated layout has a working circulation system, which has been something that uh, existing layout generation methods are struggling with. So uh, one of my main focuses was to create, to automatically generate working circulation system. So the objectives were to first investigate existing layouts and break them down into planning steps and topological principles. Then practice principles into an algorithm that generates cool layouts. Oh, sorry. Then uh, generate the layouts based on a pre-written program. Then convert, um, sorry, connect the uh, generative algorithm with evolutionary solver and optimize these layouts based on the optimization criteria that I just mentioned before and finally validate the quality of newly generated layouts. Um, so research was focused on school buildings because they have a combination of big and small rooms that is not easy to standardize. And the topological structure of schools is uh, relatively complex, but still manageable well, if those are small schools. And um, the research addresses multiple story buildings, but as the time was limited, uh, the algorithm was only, uh, yes, more, uh, only generating the ground floor. However, it's designed in a way that it can be expanded to generate multiple story buildings with uh, vertical connectivity and that would be statically plausible. 
So how it works, uh, it's, uh, the interface is in the line of Grasshopper, and uh, the user sketches an approximate shape of the building as a polyline, and then it imports a CSV building program with all the requirements. Then uh, um, a layout with main zoning from a gallery is selected and uh, fitted to uh, the user's inputted curve. And uh, into this main zoning, the rooms are placed from the imported room program. And then finally, um, the um, requirements are checked and um, it's estimated what percentage of the requirements in the room program is achieved. So the requirements I mentioned, connectivity, travel distances, daylight, room size, and so on. Um, and then, uh, the first step, uh, the choosing of uh, uh, the layout from the gallery is performed by machine learning. Second step, uh, placing the rooms is uh, performed parametrically. And the last step, uh, optimizing the room placement is uh, uh, performed with evolutionary uh, optimization. Um, so uh, first of all, a gallery is <coughs> created and um, multiple School layouts were uh, selected, traced over, subdivided into zones of horizontal circulation, vertical circulation, and available space for rooms. And then they were also modified uh, to obtain different variations, however, keeping the topological structure and um, the proportions. And here we can see the gallery or the machine learning. And uh, uh, how the the zoning and primary circulation placement works is um, uh, you can see in this video. So here is the interface in Rhino Grasshopper created with the human UI and the user selects a curve and then uh, the machine learning chooses and places a layout from the gallery. There were two methods that were used for this, uh, artificial neural networks uh, by lunchbox and a custom decision tree. And uh, as you can see in this video, in this case, they have selected a different layout. Um, then in the next one, they select the same layout. They have performed quite differently, uh, but I'm not gonna get into that right now. It can be all read uh, later in my paper, the comparison between these two methods. Um, but basically how the system works, it's very simple. Uh, the layouts are, there is a, a polyline drafted around each layout. Uh, defining its shape, and um, oh, sorry, uh, and then a vector is created uh, from which first number is the um, um, the ratio between area and perimeter, and then it goes around the figure starting starting from the longest line, and it, uh, the input is length of the line and then angle, then length of the line and then angle until the whole shape is described. And the vector uh, can contain maximum a shape of eight size, sides. And if it has less sides, like in this picture, we have a shape with five sides, then uh, the last numbers in the vector are zeros so that all vectors have the same length. And um, before uh, the shapes are fed into machine learning, they are filtered by user input. So if the user um, uh, inputs a shape of say 550 square meters, then taking a much bigger shape makes no sense because if you scale a layout too much, it loses its logic. So uh, first it's filtered to select the layouts of similar size and then machine learning selects the most similar shape from the filtered ones. And then the shape is uh, rotated, scaled, mirrored uh, um, to match the input as closely as possible. Uh, so here we have an example of a shape selected and um, the machine learning, uh, oh sorry, the filtered um, result are eight layouts that have a similar size. And then they are also transformed slightly 24 times uh, to create uh, more data for machine learning. So from eight layouts, we get almost 200 outlines and um, they're described in vectors and the user input shape is also described in a vector and the machine learning chooses the most similar layout, which in this case was number seven. Then placing the rooms in secondary circulation, we're gonna have a look at that now. 
So when the user uh, chooses a room program and uh, clicks on the generate rooms, the rooms from the room program are placed into the available spaces that are brown. <coughs> there is also a function fill empty spaces uh, um, that fills out leftover spaces automatically. And you can also <coughs> visualize travel paths between the rooms. Uh, these are the paths that are used to calculate the travel distances uh, that are required in the room program. The, every time you click on the randomize button, the parameters that define the room placement um, are changed and the, the rooms are rearranged. And uh, uh, then uh, on the lower part, you can see three circles that show how, how many percent of the requirements in the room program were fulfilled. So we can see that, for example, here, adjacency score was zero, uh, distance score is 60%, and daylight score is 70%. And in the little box on the bottom, you can see which requirements exactly could not be achieved. So uh, to optimize uh, the placement of the rooms, a possum evolutionary solver was used. And um, uh, in this example, it is uh, set up to optimize for 20 minutes and to see what kind of results can be achieved in this time. We have looked into different uh, evolutionary solvers and opossum was fast and achieved good results pretty quickly. So this is a sped up video. I wish my computer was that powerful. Um, but you can see uh, uh, this is maybe 10 times faster than in reality. And uh, you can see in the um, diagram on the top right corner that uh, uh, the score is getting better and better. Um, and uh, it has actually already achieved the maximum score, but uh, as it was set up to 20 minutes, it generated several layouts that uh, all achieve the maximum score. You can see 100% on all three circles now on the bottom left. And uh, um, yeah, uh, so I'm gonna explain a little bit what was the concept of placing the rooms. So there are three main principles. First, uh, if possible, the rooms are placed along the main circulation. Then sometimes the access of, to the main circulation is not sufficient. In this case, the secondary uh, circulation is placed, uh, which subdivides uh, the um, um, area. And then the rooms are placed along the secondary circulation. And then finally, to allow combination of big and small rooms, the leftover space can always be further subdivided. So it's a recursive process. And uh, uh, these are the exact rules of placing the rooms. So first, first, the algorithm checks if the given room is smaller than the available space. If yes, it checks the access to the main circulation. Then it checks if the width of the space matches the width of, of uh, the required width of the room. And finally, it places the room and, if necessary, the secondary circulation. And now all the brown leftover spaces go back uh, to the beginning and uh, the algorithm tries to place further rooms into it mm -hmm. until all the rooms are placed. So this, is, this shows four loops of the room placement um, algorithm. Uh, in the first step, uh, first four rooms are placed and then it repeats <coughs> process with leftover spaces uh, and in three rounds all the rooms are placed in this case. And then the rules for filling out the leftover area depend on the size and the position of leftover space. It can be that uh, the room next to it is enlarged like in the first example or if that makes no sense then a generic room is placed like in the second example. So the optimization as I mentioned have happened through uh, a possum evolutionary solver and uh, the um, required room sizes and proportions were already enforced while placing the rooms and the adjacencies travel distances and daylights were optimized later with evolutionary solver and here we can see what the room program that uh, the user imports looks like so it has the list of the rooms the amount of the rooms 
uh, the size and proportions, the light requirements, and the pink uh, matrix uh, shows the required adjacencies and distances. If it says n, that means none, zero means adjacent, and any number above zero means min maximum travel distance. So if we look at the first row, there should be maximum 25 meters between every classroom and a bathroom. Um, and here we can see the um, criteria for, uh, sorry, the parameters for evolutionary optimization. So uh, the random uh, parameters are the sequence in which the uh, spaces are taken, uh, the starting site from which the rooms are placed, and how many rooms are placed before the, before the algorithm moves to the next available space. Um, yeah, that was it. So now we get to the next steps. So next possible step would be to, ex to expand the algorithm to generate multiple story buildings. And the idea is that the main zoning that is selected from the gallery, it could be copied up several times uh, to obtain as many stories as necessary and then automatically the um, vertical circulation areas would be above each other so we would have the building cores and uh, with the same principle that the rooms are placed in one story they can also be divided on multiple stories <coughs> um, then, uh, probably a smart idea would be to generate the main zones and main circulations parametrically, similar, similarly like the rooms are placed, because that would allow more flexibility. Um, uh, it would be possible to add other simulations so, uh, or optimize the layouts with more criteria. Uh, and once we have a multiple story building, it would also make sense to convert it to a 3D non-manifold -modif model but that can be further developed and enriched with other information. And now we get to the conclusions. So as you see, new methods or new method for layout generation was developed uh, that combines parametric methods, machine learning and evolutionary simulation. And it was used to generate and evaluate school layouts from an imported through program with a working circulation system. And uh, the algorithm <laughs> For test planning, it can check the plausibility of a room program uh, on different building shapes within minutes, which liberates the hands of architects to work on real projects that are going to be built. And it also allows to change the room program more easily uh, because it can be checked faster than before. And uh, the research brought together architectural knowledge and computational methods like machine learning, evolutionary simulation, and it showed that extracting patterns found in existing architecture and incorporating them into the workflow can improve the plausibility of generated results. And uh, the approach based on combining human and artificial intelligence could uncover new opportunities for automatic building generation. Uh, that is it. Thank you for watching. Thank you so much, Deva.